Hi everyone, this is the fourth video of uh, design pattern in test automation series and today we are going to discuss about service object model. So service object model is just like uh, what we have in UI automation uh, page object model. The same thing is here in case of API automation we have service object model. So we have three layers, one is test layer, of course where we keep all the testing uh, related things, the validations, and then the second part is service layer. So as we have page object where we keep a page property, uh, not necessarily a page of course, page component property and the uh, methods, um, the actions which we need to do on those properties. Similarly, when we talk about class of a service layer, uh, here we are defining a class for each service. And then uh, here instead of uh, X path or CSS will be having endpoints, and then within those within the class only will be having interactions which are possible with those endpoints. Not all the interaction, whichever interactions are required for our testing scope, right? And then the third layer it is REST SEO related utility layer. So as in Selenium framework, we build a base class where we keep all the interactions related to Selenium. Uh, finding element, implementing weight, and those kind of stuff. In REST assured, we'll be having more uh, specific parts like maybe, for example, uh, you will be uh, defining a request configuration, which will configure your request. When we are talking about request configuration, we are talking about path parameter, query parameter, body. Uh, there can be base URL like uh, normally the base url is same within a specific application but suppose there is a flow of your application where you are interacting with some third party application of course then that third party application will have its own base url right so those kind of attributes uh, you will be defining in a request configurator uh, which will configure the request of course and then uh, we'll be having a response generator which will generate the response on basis of uh, the request that you have configured. We'll see this in action shortly. And then there can be other components as well like response validator. About this response validator, this is the only component of this REST SEO utility layer displayed here, which is which will interact with your test layer directly. The reason for that is like this is how it will be. The reason for that is uh, what happens like uh, the response that you will receive from your response generator can be a complex JSON and you might need to check all the attributes which are there in the JSONs, right? Uh, there can be several objects. You might need to fetch a particular object or you might need to fetch a particular attribute of that object. So you might work on some generic solutions you define those solution within this response validator then you have two options either you pass your expected values from your test to response validator and do the actual assertions here or you can pass the actual value from response validator to your test and then perform the assertion there that's entirely upon you right so that's all about it now let us move to the demo part so here i have created a test class it has like four tests defined here and before going into detail of each test oh i think there is some intelligent related issue okay it is solved so uh, if you will see i have like test product test single product test brand and test single brand so if you have been seeing my previous video related to a design pattern series i am using uh, json server right and this is my db.json file and it is uh, like really cool mock server that you can use and set up pretty easily uh, and you can practice your API automation on basis of this, right? So here I have one brand array and one product array and my get products endpoint will fetch all the products here and similarly get brands will fetch all the brands here and get single brand will fetch the brand on basis of ID, get single product will fetch the product on basis of ID, right? So that I have defined here. And now this is our test layer. And as we were saying that our test layer will interact with the service layer. So I have created two service classes. One is product service and the other one is brand service. 
So this is our product service class and this is brand service class. If I show you the endpoints, I have created a map here, right? This map is containing string of uh, string is key and values also uh, string. Sorry, uh, both of the key and value are string here. Then if you see endpoints dot brand, what it is like? I have I know like this is our endpoints. This is our endpoint, but you might need to uh, use some string, some constant string so that you can refer these endpoints again and again. This is also a part of reusability. For example, if you are referring this endpoint in a lot of places and in future there is some change in that particular endpoint. As on those, in all of those places you are using this particular thing, this particular string parameter. So you need not to, you need not to make change on in all of those places. Instead, you will just change in this particular class only the value of this key because key is constant right so here i have defined key uh, like uh, if we are talking about all the brands then these are brands in plural and if we are talking about a single brand this is a brand and if you have seen my previous videos related to uh, factory pattern uh, factory design pattern there i have explained all of this like how this part is built the only thing I have extended is like as we were saying about the interaction related to these endpoints. For example, in our case, we need get brands and we need get single brand. So that interaction I'm doing here. So from test layer, we reach up to this point. And now, like now, once we are in service layer, what we were talking about rest SEO related utilities, those comes into the picture. The first one is request config what request config will do. Now these are some set of properties which are there, which can be there, of course most of them are there, but few of them can be there or cannot be there. Like uh, some endpoint might have a query parameter, some might have path parameter, some might have both, some might have none of them, right? And similarly for body, right? So these are like some optional parameter, but these can be there. So I have configured all of them in a request config class. And now here we have annotations related to uh, Lombok, like uh, we are using builder pattern. This is builder, this is at the rate getter annotation, and this is all argument constructor, right? These are some annotations related to Lombok that I have included here. And as we are using builder pattern, we are we can see here, we know that this get brands endpoint, it will not have query parameter, it will not have uh, uh, path parameter, it will not have body parameter. That is known thing by help of your contract, right? There can be a swagger contract which you can refer in real time applications and you will know like whether this endpoint have query parameter, path parameter or body or not, right? And accordingly you can have this builder pattern. And if you have seen the video related to builder pattern, there I have mentioned like there can be a cases where you might have like in this case we have six attribute for a request config class but every object might not have all the attributes so that's where builder pattern is coming into the picture so instead of passing null 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 for path uh, path parameter query parameter body parameter we we are avoiding that part and we are just using the setter of the builder pattern now here we have set the values here we have a object of request config class. Now, once the request has been configured, the next thing is to pass that object, to set that object to a request, like this is a response generator class, which we have created. And it also has the attribute request config. Why we have assigned it? Because we know that whenever we are generating a response, <clears throat> the request that we have configured, that will be required. So that's why the attribute of uh, like we have a reference of request config as a attribute in response generator. Now, the next thing is uh, here, if you see, I have called uh, here. Here we have the object of response generator post build and here I have called get response method. Now this get response method, what it is doing, it is first checking the type of HTTP method we have passed, right? So 
once you are within your method of service class you are setting the values and after you come here the value is already set so you will be able to see request config dot get method whether it is uh, put post get delete and similarly others right so here you can have case statements like case get if it is a get call then you just need to use the attributes that you have set we'll see how those attributes coming into the picture in this method but before that you can just see that get response is just for segregating uh, getting the response on basis of what kind of http method it is now we come to this function request specification what it will do uh, on high level because you have defined uh, the properties like query parameter path parameter base url uh, and body but there are some already predefined things that might be required like uh, bearer token authorization was thing then your my uh, application might need to avoid ssl uh, https validations right then there can be some timeout that you want to configure so those all of those things will be global things which you will be defining within this particular method alongside with the properties that you have already uh, defined in request config let me show you how so if you see here uh, first what we are doing we are defining the timeout timeout for every api call that we are going to make with help of rest SEO config and then this is for relaxed https validation and then what we have here we are passing the header so headers are more, uh, more or less common like if you are talking about an application headers are common you might need to set the content type you might need to set the authorization like if you will see here in case you have a bearer token or some other form of authorization you can use set auth here you can pass the uh, auth like whatever auth you, your application is supporting right and then base url is same so we are sending the base url here in case you have third party integration you can mold this functionality as per your need but as of now you can keep it like this and then in the end uh, here we have set config the config that we have defined here that we are setting in our request specification builder and then more things to be there are like basis of whether the, uh, we have set the values of those things or not for example body if body is not null only then we will set the values similarly for query parameter and path parameter so all of these things till here these are global but these three things depends upon whether the request uh, support that kind of thing or not so that's why we have these checks here before assigning the values once we come here uh, we have rest assured dot given which will uh, send the request specification object and here we have used the specification the specifications that we have defined above we have passed it here right so if you will see here this is a request specification and this request spec builder here we have used the builder and once we are doing build we are just having the request specifications here so we have written the request specification and then the same request specification we are using to either hit the get call post call put call or delete call because this request specification will have all the attributes which are required to hit that request now right so i think now the picture is clear like how we are using rest assured in our service layer and then you know, within uh, the test layer we are calling our service layer now let me move back to the test layer and we'll execute the test there so i as i was saying that i haven't created a response validator for this demo uh, but i think you will be able to relate the things here like from within the test layer we have removed extra chunk of code that we had in our previous demos like for factory design better we had like these kind of test where we were passing the services build point and all the things here but now if you see here i have just used get product and this get product is handling this thing 
base url here we are setting the base url and if you have seen the previous videos where we discussed about factory design pattern there you will be able to see how this base url and endpoint are being constructed for example this get endpoint i have created a util class just a, a util class here which will be returning the base url and the endpoints on basis of service and on basis of service and endpoint here and again just to see how we create the service factory i will recommend you to go to the factory design pattern related video and now coming to the test part so we have these four tests here and i will just trigger them maybe i did trigger it already but it will be a quick one so let's see okay test brands is being called so here we have all the brands here we have all the products here we have single brand and here we have the single product so i think now the idea is clear uh, how this service object model is being constructed and then the talking about benefit of course we have uh, in case some new service is being introduced we just need to go to our place where we have kept the services of course this is just the package i have created as per the pattern that we are using like for builder factory and then the service object model but you will have a defined structure and soon we'll be having one uh, one complete series on how to create end-to-end -end api automation framework but before that i wanted to touch base upon the design patterns that we'll be using so in future whenever we will be working on that uh, we'll be able to relate things and now uh, in case there is a new service introduced just create the service create the endpoints define these uh, like whatever the um, actions that you need to perform on those endpoints with the help of our uh, rest SEO related utilities that we have created right and you can see the code uh, even in your test class it is more readable now as compared to what we had earlier so in our test factory that's what we were doing but now we know like uh, what we are trying to do we are trying to get the products we are trying to get single product and similarly for brand and uh, get single brand right so that's how like uh, service object model and page object model both makes your code uh, compact in the test layer you are not uh, interacting with your rest SEO related utilities within your test layer you are keeping uh, like what kind of code you need to keep in one place what kind of code you need to keep in another place you are aware of that so whenever the change is required you will just go to that place and make that change so that's how this code will be more maintainable as well so i think uh, that's it for this particular demo in case you have any query any feedback please do reach out by the comment section and i'll share the github repo link in the description section of the video in case you're liking the content that i'm making please do like do share and do subscribe see you in the next video thank you